Welcome to day three of Women in Tech, where I'll be discussing my non-traditional path into technology. My name is Nicole Dove, and I'm the Director of Security Engineering here at Riot Games. And in my role, I help align the priorities and initiatives across the InfoSec function and games pillar to drive collaboration and create thoughtful and secure capabilities that enable innovation. So across my career, I have never had a dream job or a dream role. I've typically just taken the path of doing things that I enjoy, doing what feels right, and work that just generally feels good. My personality, though, is one that is full of curiosity, and I am chronically seeking adventure, so that makes a lot of sense. But I also love people. I am obsessed with winning, and I find ways to do that in every role that I take on. Because my path hasn't necessarily been pre-mapped out, that means my journey typically hasn't been easy, right? It has been full of uncertainty and lots and lots of challenges. But through mentorship, a lot of supportive peers, and an encouraging family unit, I was able to navigate that journey with pace and grace. And that same journey is what led me to a career in cybersecurity. And what I want to communicate first is becoming a non-traditional technologist is not impossible, but it will take lots of hard work, innovation, dedication, discipline, and perseverance. So I want to walk you through a bit of my personal and professional journey so you can see how they collide. I am the daughter of a musician, my dad, and a retired banker, my mom. So I grew up with people who were completely opposite, right? One who was super, super creative and the other who was very, very precise and liked structure. This helped me develop both right and left brain capabilities. I decided to go to Clark Atlanta University where I studied finance and accounting. And the motto of my alma mater is find a way or make one. It was drilled into me all throughout undergraduate. So it's no surprise that it influenced my professional capabilities. I found myself working in structured organizations, but leveraging creativity to help solve the problems that I would encounter. So immediately after college, I started my career at a Wall Street investment bank, then spent a few years at a big four consulting firm. After that, I was at a video game company for five years and then moved into a human capital management tech company for nearly 10. I ended up moving back into entertainment a couple of years later and then joined Riot Games. Now, what I want to highlight is that each company and role built different muscles and skills for me. So when I was on Wall Street, um, I was in a role in treasury operations that managed the relationship between over 300 banks and the investment bank that I was working for. What I learned in that role was you really have to not only think about the operational impact of the things that you do, but the financial impact of the decisions that you make. The bank was also wildly popular among its customers, and I began to see the benefit of having such strong brand loyalty. After working at the bank for a few years, I moved over into a big four consulting firm. And essentially, I was an entry-level consultant working across various industries, helping management make decisions. So the interesting thing about this role is though I was very young in my career, a part of what I was tasked to do was come in, hit the ground running, learn the business fast, find opportunities for improvement, and position and structure solutions in a way that I would need to influence and gain buy-in from the customers that we were serving, right? That means that I had to be very innovative, right? I had to develop a lot of solutions, but I also had to learn how those solutions connected to problems that the organizations were having and then be able to understand my audience and present them in a way that was impactful and influential. Lots of, lots of travel with that role. So understanding how to develop travel best practices um, was something that sounds administrative, but is super, super important. And another big thing that I love about this role was that it helped me understand the value of relationship management. After I worked in consulting for some time, I moved over to a video game company, completely different culture 
right? So I love the fact that I could come to work with my hair any color I wanted to and nobody bat an eye, right? And I love that not only me, but all the people that I worked with were able to just freely express themselves, but still be taken seriously as professionals. Um, I love that culture. And it also began to show me how culture plays a role in how people and leaders do business. I also just generally like the idea of a company focused on play. Right. So much of our lives are dedicated to work, but I love the aspect of contributing to something where people can play and enjoy themselves. The video game company was also significantly smaller than any other company that I had worked for. So I began to see how small companies operate compared to the typical large multinational enterprise structure. And the last thing I want to call out about that role was that I really began to understand how important it was for me as an employee to be connected to the actual product that we give to our customers. So after spending about five years in gaming, I moved over to a human capital management tech company. So we developed software as a service and the payroll space for companies of all sizes huge company, right? Um, And so that gave me the opportunity to actually build global teams. I've built teams in Romania, Philippines, India, Brazil. I actually spent some time actually living and working in Romania as we started up our operations there. Um, That actually showed me the value of diversity, right? And having people from different walks of life and different cultures and different educational backgrounds, how we could all come together and provide such a wide variety and spectrum of perspectives when trying to build solutions or solve problems for our customers. Um, I also really began to develop my leadership brand in that sense because I began to move higher um, in my career and understand that leadership is not necessarily telling people what to do, but equipping your team to be successful and learn and grow and thrive in those arenas. The other thing that really stands out for me about my experience at this company was this was where I got my first introduction into a career in tech. Uh, my My career in tech started at my third position at this company, and I grew an interest in technology because I realized that no matter what I did, not at this company or anyone else, technology was connected and essentially enabled each and everything that we did. You could not escape it. And so I was really focused on how can I take everything that I've built along my journey and make impact and find a space in this industry. And I'm going to walk you through my four-prong strategy that I used to get into tech. And you can also use this if you want to grow your career in tech. So first, I want to call out While it is quite intimidating to move into a new industry or a new team, please don't let that stop you. You have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain, right? Nothing beats a failure, but a try, all right? So let's walk through each of the four steps. The first thing is you need to identify your strengths. What are the things that you do really well? And also, what are the things that you do better than most people? You can take a look at your career history and you'll begin to start to understand and identify some themes and trends. If you have access to them, go back and read your previous performance reviews and highlight the things that your leaders talk about that you do well. In your personal life, what do people call you for? What do people rely on you for? And looking at both your personal and professional journeys, What are your biggest wins? If you don't know, you can take an assessment like Myers-Briggs, Standout, or Strength Finders to actually help you identify those things in your professional toolkit. The next thing you want to do is actually find opportunities within the industry that you're interested in that align with those same strengths that you've identified. So you can use keywords from that strengths inventory that you've built to perform job searches. And the goal is not to match everything, but to match most of the things that that employer or that team is looking for in that role. 
it's critically important that you understand the skills and the mindsets that are needed and the value that needs to be delivered when you're thinking about these opportunities and aligning yourself as a possible candidate. Now, once you've identified some roles that align well with the things that you bring to the table, the next thing you want to do is build your network and connect with people who sit in those roles or people who manage or lead teams that include those roles. And you can do that anywhere. You can start within your company or you can look outside of your current organization. The key is to connect with them and understand the day-to-day experiences that they have. Study the makeup of their teams and dig into their priorities, right? Begin to speak and learn the jargon and just immerse yourself in that journey. And once you've assessed that these roles are right, you also have to look and think about what are some of the things that may not feel so good, right? And this is not in that role, but it's across your entire journey. So what are some of the skills required for these roles that you don't have? You don't stop there, though. Once you've identified what those are, you need to craft a plan to get them and actually start right now, okay? Then I want you to take a look at your career history and think about some of the things that you don't like because understanding what you don't want is equally as important as that which you do, all right? The last thing is highlight your special sauce. What makes you a standout person for candidacy in this role or this industry or these opportunities? You need to take a step back and think about what you have that the typical candidate who's going to apply for this role doesn't have And most importantly, how that will help you add value to what this team is looking to accomplish. These components are how you build your story, understand your why, cultivate your purpose, and build your confidence. And you have a sure shot of penetrating any industry, especially tech, if that's your choice. I hope that you found today's content valuable. Good luck on your journey. 